So this week we are making Bernebrod. I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation, but it is a traditional Swiss bread. It is an enriched dough, meaning that it has butter and eggs in it. It's a little bit similar to challah. And if you want to know how to make that, click the link in the top right corner. But let's get on with the Bernebrot for now. So here's the equipment that we'll use. Baking tray with parchment paper, scales for weighing all your ingredients, bowl for mixing, trusty little dough scraper, a brush and a temperature probe. That's all you will need. Now on to the ingredients. You'll need strong white bread flour, milk, a couple of yolks and an egg, some soft butter, sugar, yeast, salt, an extra egg for brushing and some sesame seeds for sprinkling. Now I know my kitchen is around 22 degrees Celsius, so I want my milk to be around 22 to 23 as well. So let's begin. As always, get your bowl, pour your milk in, add your yeast. You want to let the yeast hydrate for a couple of minutes and then add your sugar. Add your eggs after that and give it a good mix. And next will be the salt. We're adding the salt last because you don't want your yeast and salt to mingle for too long. Salt essentially kills yeast. So just add your salt and mix the dissolved flakes and then add your flour. We will add the butter later and you will see why. But for now, just grab your dough scraper or a spatula or you can even use your hand and give your dough a good mix until you don't see any dry flour anymore. And once you're happy with that, scrape everything out of the bowl onto your work surface and start kneading. This dough is not too wet, so we will be using the regular, normal dry dough kneading method. People knead their dough in different ways, but this I've found is, for me, the easiest and most efficient way. I press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, and I use the fingers of my left hand to fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, and repeat. Continue kneading for about 5 minutes or until decent gluten development. We want some gluten structure before we add the butter. And to add the butter, you want to stretch the dough out to about an inch thickness. If it doesn't want to stretch, just pull harder. Don't worry about breaking it at this point because we will be destroying it in a minute anyway. You'll see. Now get your soft butter. Make sure it's soft, but it's still quite cool. You don't want it to be runny and then spread it all over your dough piece. And once it's all evenly spread out, you want to fold over the dough to cover up the butter. And then we'll get on to the messy part. Now pick it up and start squishing it. Literally squish it through your fingers, tear it. You want to squeeze the butter into the dough. And at this point you may think, what the hell is this? This is never gonna make bread, but trust me, just keep at it and it will all come back together. The reason why we are adding the butter at this stage and not at the beginning is that the fat in the butter would coat the flour particles and it would prevent gluten formation. So you want to keep kneading your dough until it starts coming back together. And if it gets a bit messy and sticky, just scrape it all up and continue. We are once again just using the normal kneading method as before and you want to continue doing this for around 5 more minutes or until the dough becomes nice and smooth again. Yeah, so once it's ready, it should be smoother. It might be a little bit sticky still. Generally, of course, it's much easier to incorporate butter and eggs into a dough using a dough mixer, but we're doing it by hand, so this will do. So once you already organize your dough into a little bowl, and we are ready for the first proof. So get your bowl, place your dough bowl in it, and take the temperature. You always want to take the temperature of your dough, just to know where you're at. If it's too warm, you want to place it in the cooler part of your kitchen. If it's too cold, the other way around. So I'm at 25 degrees Celsius, which is just about what I wanted. Now we can cover it up and let it proof for one hour. And we will fold the dough after one hour, which will increase the gluten structure and also equalize the temperature of the dough ball. So to perform the fold, lightly dust your dough ball with flour. You really don't want too much flour here. We are not working in any flour into the recipe, so this is just to prevent it from sticking. And then take your scraper and release the dough from the bowl and tip it out on the table, smooth side down. Remember the scar and the face. The face will always be the smooth and pretty side. The scar will be this bottom bit. 
and that's the reason for always keeping it on the bottom. So to do the fold, stretch the corners over the middle, go around in a circle until you reach the point where you started and until it's a nice tight ball. You don't want to overstretch it because it might break but just have it nice and tight and that will do. And then flip it back upside down and place it into the ball, smooth side up, cover it up again and we'll proof it for one more hour. And now the dough should start really puffing up. Looks about right, so now we can divide it and pre-shape it. And get a little bit of flour, dust your dough ball, once again release it from the bowl and tip it out on the table. We want to cut the dough in four equal parts. And I suggest using scales for this. You could eyeball it, but weighing it will give you a more consistent result. And remember, when cutting and weighing out the dough, always place any loose parts or any extra bits on the scar side. You want the smooth side to stay smooth. So because we are going to roll this dough out, we want to pre-shape it into little cylinders. So grab a piece of dough, fold in the edges, and then fold over the top and the bottom. You don't have to roll them very tight, but you want the general shape to be correct. And don't worry if you mess one up, you still have three pieces to practice on. But if you mess up all of them, you'll still get a decent piece of bread at the end. So just keep at it. So once you finish pre-shaping, you want to dust them lightly with flour, cover them with cling film and let them relax for 15 minutes. You have to let the gluten relax a little bit, otherwise it will be impossible to roll them out. And as you will see, whilst they are relaxing, they will still continue proofing and popping up. So 15 minutes later we can start the shaping process. Dust your table with flour lightly and then take a piece of dough and applying equal pressure, roll it out from the center to the edges and always repeat, always start from the middle and roll until you get to right to the edge. You want them to be about as long as your forearm. And don't be too rough now, you want to roll them gently not to press out any fermentation gases that we spent so much time to build up inside. They may still pull back a little bit so once you've finished rolling all of them you can re-roll them just to make them all the same length again. Now let's get on to the braiding. You want to lay two of the strands down vertically and two across horizontally. And then take the bottom right hand side horizontal strand and tuck it underneath the vertical one. And then repeat the same move with the top left hand horizontal strand. And then take the bottom left hand side vertical strand and place it over its neighbor to the right. And then repeat the same move going around in a circle until you've done all four strands. After that, do the same but the opposite way around. And then once you have gone all the way around again, you want to tuck all the loose corners underneath, making a nice round loaf. And if none of this made sense, just follow my hands and you'll get there. So when you tuck under the loose bits of dough, you will see the loaf kind of standing up and it's quite a nice shape. So you want to pull it together a little bit more and make it stand tall. So now you can get your tray with your parchment paper, place your dough on it for its final proof. If you feel that it's a little bit sticky, you can dust your loaf with flour to prevent the cling film from sticking to it. You don't want too much, just a light dusting will do. And then cover it up with cling film and we'll leave it to proof for one more hour. And whilst it's proofing, we can preheat our oven to 160 degrees Celsius with the fan on. I would suggest baking this bread with a fan on because it has all kinds of little nooks and crannies and you want the hot air to be blown all around it, kind of baking it a little bit better. But if you don't have a fan oven, you want to bake this at 180 degrees Celsius. So before baking, we want to brush our bread with egg. You want to brush it all over evenly and if you want an extra rich crust, what you can do is brush it all over, then let it dry for 5 minutes and then brush it again. And once you've finished, our last move is to sprinkle on the seeds. It should take around 45 to 50 minutes to bake. 
But if you are not sure if it's ready or not, what you can do is get your temperature probe and stick it right into the center. And if it reads 95 or higher in Celsius, then it's ready. That is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the burner broth. Looks good, right? You can enjoy it with sweet or savory toppings. But as always, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I post every Wednesday. Write your questions or suggestions down in the comments. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.